Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome to 365.training presents 10 minute video tips where we provide tips, tricks and video based instruction on the Power Platform and Dynamics 365 features and functionality in 10 minutes or less. In this first video, we'll go ahead and examine business rules, particularly from a model driven apps perspective. We'll examine where you'll use them, how to configure them and best practices around putting them into your application. So before we show you how to build them, let's first talk about what a business rule is and, and where you would typically use them. A lot of times you're going to encounter scenarios in model driven apps where you need some type of form based interaction with the user, particularly at a field level. And that's really where business rules come into play is the ability to go out and create events that occur at a field level in real time based upon items that are taking place in the form. So for example, if we look at this real estate property, we can see here that this property was built in the year 2001. And, and based upon this company's procedures, they don't necessarily require a property inspection because of the fact that it was built within the last 20 years. But what happens if this was looked at from a different perspective and maybe this house was built in 1978? Well, now all of a sudden as we come into this, we can see that a little light bulb pops up and it says, you know what, because this was built before a certain amount of time, we actually uh, recommend that you get a building inspection for this particular item. And so this now populates as a business rule that provides that real time feedback to the user where they can actually apply the business rule or even just set the field to a specific value. And now you'll notice that because I made this inspection required, there's now an inspection date field that populates. And so business rules really give you that sense of, of real time feedback that can be done on items as people are entering information into the application. So typically you're going to create your business rules through the make.powerapps interface. If you're unfamiliar with make.powerapps.com, this is where you can go out and create canvas apps, model driven apps, even web based portals as well, as well as creating solutions and modifying the common data service entities that are associated with a specific environment. So this is really your customization interface when you start talking about CDS specific to an environment. For example, in the previous example, we talked about creating a business rule or using a business rule on a custom entity called property. So this is where I could go out and actually define that particular situation. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick search for my real estate property entity, which is just a custom entity that I created. And I'll go ahead and open up that real estate property. In here, I can go ahead and see that I'll, I'll see business rules. This is where I can start creating business rules associated with this environment. Let's just go ahead and create a new business rule from scratch. So when you first come into your business rule designer, you'll have all the information that you need kind of right at your fingertips. You can use this information to add steps, to modify or copy existing steps or, or fields or items that you're utilizing. You can even utilize it to take a snapshot of where you're currently at in that item as you're creating it. Over here, you're going to see items that you can use for saving this, uh, eventually activating this business rule once you're ready to work with this, as well as the ability to go ahead and modify the scope. And the scope's going to give you the, uh, the option to define kind of how this business rule applies. Um, if it applies at an entity level, it's going to be more of kind of a, a server based situation. Whereas if you come in here and set this to something like all forms, now this is saying that if you have, you know, multiple forms that are based off of this particular entity that are maybe even being used in different model driven apps in this environment, this business rule is going to apply to all of those forms based upon the real estate entity. If for some reason the fields that are being referenced in that particular item are not included, it doesn't matter. They just won't necessarily, the, the business rule won't run. Up here, I can go ahead and create the business rule. So in here, I'm going to just give this a name. So I'll just kind of call this um, site inspection. And then I could define a description for this based upon what I want to work through. But at this point, we'll just kind of leave it where it's at. Over here, you'll see a list of the different kind of components or elements that you can do with this business rule. Obviously, everything's going to be based off of a condition. So it's all going to start with some type of condition. I can either add this a condition or as I'm working through this, if I wanted to have different tiers to say, okay, do this. If this doesn't work, now check this condition. You can stack multiple conditions. As a condition is being added to the form, you now have the ability to modify the properties around that condition. So what exactly is this condition trying to do? Well, this condition is trying to determine whether or not we can create or perform or do an inspection or whatever that situation might be. So in this scenario here, 
I'm just going to call this check inspection. And then I can base this off of entities, or in some cases, you can even base business rules um, off of different stages and, and steps that are taking place. But in this case, we're going to just go ahead and base it off of an entity. Down here, you'll see that you have rules. Now, you can have multiple conditions in a rule. So I could go ahead and add a few different scenarios, but we'll keep it simple and just say, okay, what are we doing in this situation? Well, in this case, from an entity perspective, we are going to go ahead and look to see if an inspection is required. If the inspection required field, which would be just a field that we would have added to this entity, if that is set to yes, now we want to do something. So what we're going to do in this scenario is we're going to hit apply. That ensures that the condition name stays relevant with the item that we're working with. Then we're going to come over into here and we're going to hit components. And now we're going to define what to do if this particular situation is correct. So in this scenario, I want to maybe go ahead and toggle the visibility of a field. Now, prior to doing this, I would A, have to make sure that the field exists, the field is added to a form, and that the field has been hidden on that form by default. That way, I can now go ahead and toggle the visibility. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the set visibility action to define how I want this field to be visible. Again, I'm going to do it on the real estate property. I'm going to do it on a specific field. At this point, it's going to be the inspection date field. And we're going to go ahead and make that require, uh, set that to visible and hit apply. So I now have a business rule that says if the condition, um, if the condition is met, we are now going to show this particular field. What we haven't done is we haven't defined what to do if it is false. And so it's very important, particularly when you start getting into some of the error method uh, field-based uh, business rules, to make sure that there's something that takes place if indeed that condition is not met. Otherwise, it may switch the field to yes, but if you turn around and change the criteria in the future, it may not necessarily run again. So you always need to have kind of a trigger back. So in this case, I would go into components and I would say set visibility false condition and I would do kind of the same situation. I would say in this case we're going to do the inspection date but this time we're going to set that to false. Now no matter what particular scenario is being defined the application is going to automatically flip that for us and, and set the right situation. Once we've done this now I can go ahead and validate it. It'll perform just a quick validation to make sure that everything works. I can save the business rule and then before I can actually use it in my environment, I have to then go ahead and activate the business rule. This will ensure that the business rule is then available to be used across that particular application. Let's examine another way that you could potentially use these business rules to fit that, that situation. If you remember back to the original example that we showed you, we also had it uh, pop up a little light bulb. That's done through what is called the recommendation field. And so I've got the same concept initially. I've got a condition that goes out, it looks at the year built field, and it says, okay, if the year built field, you know, was before, um, you know, is less than a certain value, what are we going to do? Well, in this case, the component that we elected to use was the recommendation component. And so what this recommendation component actually does is it goes out and says, okay, we're going to base a recommendation on the inspection uh, required field. And we're going to create a message that pops up called inspection recommended. And we're going to define in the details why we recommend that inspection. And we're also going to come up here and we're going to define inside the action what specific recommendation we are, what we are actually recommending for that field. So in this case, for the inspection required, we're recommending that this field be set to yes. So now if somebody sets this, it's going to automatically pop this recommendation up with a tip that says we recommend you set to yes. If you hit apply, it'll automatically set that item to yes. But on the flip side, we also have a situation that says, okay, if it is not in that scenario, now what do we want to do? So here it's now coming back and saying, if that's not the case, if it's not before that specific year, let's just go ahead and set that recommended field to no. That way we know that, you know, we don't necessarily recommend or, or need it to be filled in at that point. This gives you another example of, of how you might utilize those to kind of fit your specific needs.
So that's going to do it for our introduction to business rules. Uh, hopefully you found it as a nice get you started point to see how they work and how you might be able to utilize them moving forward. Um, please uh, log on to 365.training for our complete class library of all the different classes that we have related to Power Platform and Dynamics 365. And again, thank you so much for watching everybody. This is Derek saying take care everybody and have a good one.